Dann nehme ich die
Frau Gamo,
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome everybody. Um, we want to give you a happy welcome to our third. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Auch das kriegen. Moment, falsche Taste. Yeah. Uh, we're going to welcome you to our eighth prototyping week, and it's the fourth prototyping week that's going to be sold out in a row. So we are pretty happy to see so many happy and curious faces. And but first of all. Give yourself a little bit of applause that you made it here, that you find the courage to wake up in the morning, to go here, you didn't know what to expect. So at least that's yeah, a good way to start. Okay, um, I don't want to tell you too much, but at least I need, I need to tell you some sentences. First of all, um, the language is mainly in English, but as soon as you don't understand what I'm or the other people are saying, raise your hand and we're going to switch, because there are also English and internationals here with us, and it would be nice to be as open as possible. So that's the reason why we're speaking English. So. Um, welcome to our world. We have a world here, it's called Starter Kitchen, where there are a, a little bit different rules. First of all, nobody laughs at you when you present your idea, that's the most important part. Um, second of all, you get free coffee all day long. And third of all, there are just very warm people around you, so um, nobody's going to hurt you and we we'll kind of will become a bit of family throughout these five days. And we hope that you'd also like to stay later on after the end of the week and still remain part of the family. 
So um, just to give you a brief example, we are here. This is the starter kitchen. That's the whole open campus cloud. And um, if everything with your idea and your, your team works well, then maybe sooner or later uh, you will see definitely throughout the week the Fab Lab. Maybe you work here in another uh, re dine room, uh, re co-working space and garden. Or later on you will present your idea or your startup at the International Vatican Festival next year for a big audience. So that's like the ideal process. Um, first of all, but how to get there? The, maybe it sounds strange, but the most important thing is that start to feel comfortable with failing. And I'll give you a brief example. I tried it myself. I take, took part in the prototyping week with less hair, obviously. It was in 2013. I want to create my own uh, or our own uh, philosophy platform. We even had a logo. We even had some fancy images. But later on, we ran out of money out of six months. But without this and without the participation in the prototyping week, I would not be standing here. Because later on, Open Campus evolved and I said, OK, I've done something like it before. So please take me. I won't leave anymore. So you, the most important thing is you cannot expect what comes out of this week. And so it doesn't matter if it's the idea you stick to, if it's some people you stick to, if it's just the atmosphere or the feeling you stick to, it doesn't matter. Just be open, be passionate about the week that's still to come, and the rest will follow. Second rule, you can read it, because there are a lot of doubts for everybody. Some people say, oh my god, I can't draw because my art teachers told me when I was 10 when I wanted to uh, draw a horse, it looks like a pig, so I completely stopped drawing at all. Doesn't matter. Don't rely on this art teacher. He was just able to think in his categories and here, as I told you before, are other categories. So really the strangest thing that nobody likes in school could be totally badass here. So please don't rely on stuff that other people told you further on. And I also, it's not my saying, but also brought you a little bit of insights about this man. Anybody heard of him? I guess you do. And, but I, want, I would like to um, tell you some principles about him, but first of all, show you a small video, what he made him so special. Just need to fix the sound issues, one second. So Painting of Leonardo da Vinci is one of the world's most masterful artists. But really, he was a scientist, incorporating anatomy, chemistry, and optics into the artistic process. With the Mona Lisa, Leonardo was able to bring a one-dimensional painting to life, creating an augmented reality experience centuries before the concept even existed. During the years when Leonardo was perfecting Mona Lisa's smile, he spent his nights in a morgue in Florence, dissecting cadavers to better understand the human body. He identified and drew bones, muscles, and nerves in his notebook. He was obsessed with understanding the mechanics of human expression, examining the muscles that move the lips, cheeks, and teeth. Amid these observations, we see the makings of Mona Lisa's smile. But Leonardo had a problem. He could now envision the Mona Lisa down to the inner workings of her face. But how could he make her real? For that, he turned to chemistry. Leonardo began painting with a primer coat of lead white, rather than just a mix of chalk and pigment. He knew that this other coat would be better at reflecting light. He then applied glazes with a small proportion of pigment to oil, rendering them translucent. On the cheek, Leonardo applied lines only 5 to 30 micrometers thick, which made his brush marks almost invisible. Paint strokes were applied in an intentionally irregular way that started to make the grain of the skin look more lifelike. For the shadows that formed the contours around Mona Lisa's smile, Leonardo pioneered the use of an iron and manganese mix. The many layers of glaze make the painting seem three-dimensional. Leonardo eventually had a strikingly realistic portrait, but he still wanted more to make the painting interactive, taking that final step into our reality. 
and for this, he incorporated his studies of optics. Leonardo discovered that the central area of the retina, known as the fovea, is best at picking up small details, like the edges of Mona Lisa's lips. The area surrounding the fovea, meanwhile, is best at picking up shadows and shadings of black and white. Leonardo masterfully manipulated the details and shading around the lips to take full advantage of peripheral vision. When you look at Mona Lisa's lips, she doesn't appear to be smiling. But when you look away, a smile appears. By leaning on science, Leonardo da Vinci was able to create a living smile, one that is elusive if we are too intent on seeing it. Stand before the painting, and the science, magic, and art all blur together to what some consider to be the world's first augmented reality experience. Uh, so, the question is, why do I tell you all of this? I think, um, first of all, he was somebody who wanted to go his own way and he didn't ask for, to, for permission to go there. He was the first one who combined really the different disciplines, as you have heard, from science, art and magic. And this is something that could also evolve here because we have a lot of different talents. Everybody has a talent on its own and in completely different fields. So it might be that you team up with somebody who is very good in playing card tricks and have another one who is a programmer and have another one who is a visual artist. So it doesn't matter what kind of talent you have, you just need to find the right people to make something out of it together. And the only thing that really you need to take part, but it obviously brought you here, is curiosity. And this is also the same stuff that he kind of thrived with. And the most important part is he was able to do all of his stuff because he was doubting everything he sees. He does not, he did not take anything for granted and throughout the doubt he came to new conclusions. So in this way it's always nice also to doubt sometimes. First of all, uh, he was also an outsider. Um, maybe you've heard of some people in your school, the very popular guys, you don't know what they're doing anymore, but really the freaks stand out throughout the way because the freaks are motivated more to find their way in life and the people who were very popular, they did not struggle so hard because they were really popular, but then at some point it's um, going in another direction. So really embrace your difference. This is the stuff that really stands out in you apart from the rest. Everybody has something special. You just need to find it and bring it into the team. And what's also, there's some similarities here. Um, first of all, the Gutenberg press was invented, so he had really a rich content site where he could learn from. That's the same for you, kind of, it's not really new, but also like 20 years is kind of still new. And um, we, you ha we had, and especially uh, he had as well, a lot of mixed talents in a very diverse and lively city. And this is also the stuff that we see here in Kiel, there are a lot of projects appearing, there are a lot of people coming in, a lot of different talents. I think there's a lot of going on. You just need to take it now and do a great team out of it. It was also quite funny. I'm pretty sure he had HDA, ADHS, the, F, the, the Attention Deficit Syndrome, because he was not really able to finish most of his works. 85% were not finished because he was not able to concentrate to really go through all the process. And he was also completely lost in his perfection. So I think it was not really easy to be him, but we, at least we can learn from him. And that's why we brought you a schedule throughout the week. So we'll ask you for every day to finish something. And we are pretty sure that the time will never be enough. But this schedule just helps you to make it to, or to finish it anyway, even if you have the feeling that it's not good enough. Because we have the kind of strange feeling, mainly because of the university, that we are just about to speak about something when it's really completely polished for one year. But like the startup world does not work like this. Because if you wait one year, then nobody cares about it anymore. So we try to emphasize you and to motivate you to speak about your idea as soon as it's ready and as soon as you have it in your head. So that's the schedule I'm talking about. Every day is something else. We will guide you through the problem and through the different um, solutions. So don't bother so much. Just today we're going to introduce you to the different ideas and we're going to provide you with a team or you will be part of a team. That's basic for now. And even this, it's a lot to talk. 
to negotiate, to get to know new people, but it will be fun in any case. So, and what's also pretty much important, um, not every idea that you brought here could be made possible throughout the week because normally we have about 30 ideas but there are not so many people to work on it and it's more normally it's more um let's say realistic that really something good comes out of it when you have between two to three people in the end so if you have an idea and if you find that nobody's interested interested in your idea Get over this idea and try to look what kind of other ideas might be around and then you can team up and have a better experience together. You, if you really want to, you can also go along with your idea on your own, but it will be more hard throughout the week because you will be frustrated throughout the week. It's part of the process as well. Um, you will be overwhelmed, but there are also good things ahead. And if you are, have a team, then there's always somebody around you who can cheer you up and say, okay, we got to manage it, don't worry, we can do it. So it's really better to go together throughout this process. And there are a lot of really, really nice people who would like to help you throughout the week. I brought you some of them here with you, and I would suggest that we could try to introduce them when they're here. They're not, not, not everybody is here because they're going to join us throughout the day. But who I have saw, yeah, Marion, would you like to introduce yourself and tell a sentence about yourself, please? Yeah, hi, I'm Marion. I'm working for, uh, I work for the TV, um, the Kieler Wirtschaftsförderung, and I'm the responsible for uh, the all issues around about startups. And I'm here to support you by developing your business and perhaps for some financing issues for Tuesday, perhaps I can help you. Mm -hmm. Cool, great. Then the next one we have Aiden. <clears throat> My name is Aiden. Um, I had a startup. I'm past that now, thankfully. Um, I'm helping this week with a bit on the business modeling side and also anything related to fintech and blockchain. Cool. Then the next one is Dennis. Um, hi, I'm Dennis. Um, I come from Bauer Digital. Um, we are a software company, and I think um, I'm. Uh, respond, you, yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Yeah, you're so broad that you brought this special one in the week. So thanks for being here. And uh, we have Susanna. Where is she? Uh, maybe she, she's at the entrance still. We have Christina. They're also still in the entrance. We have Volker. Where's Volker? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, but no, but then you can introduce yourself. Yeah, Maybe. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. So, who's left? Uh, Johannes? Okay. Yeah. Hi, um, I work for Open Campus. I study environmental management and I'm here to make you feel good, to help you with anything. Um, so, I'm here throughout the whole week and um, if you have any questions, um, doubts, whatever, come to me. I will. Try right, to help you or find somebody who can. Great. Uh, then we have Caro. She will be our guide for video game development today. So, Hi, or also throughout the week. Yeah. Just a quick presentation. So, I am Caro. I'm a historian of games. And yeah, we do more decision games and um, also an initiative for um, computer game staff. For computer game programming or um, designing a communication company. Then we have Jule. Uh, hi, I'm Julia. I'm working for Open Campus. Um, and I will be the girl you come to when you need help with digital marketing, like how can you get your product or your community up. Uh, and I'm also going to be the vice president. Cool. Volker? Yeah, Volker. Um, I'm the head of the Fab Lab. And if you want to do something with hardware prototyping, laser cutting, drilling, 3D printing, then. Um, you can ask me. Cool. Uh, so we are Christina and Susanna, <laughs> and uh, we are your design help for the week. Uh, so if you need any help with your design, can you come uh, to us? We are sitting in the sauna. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Logotype, web design, whatever. Just come to us. <clears throat> Great. Cool. So there are a lot of really good and uh, nice people who will help you throughout the week, so you won't be alone. 
And uh, there are some, just two more things to go. We don't judge, we don't have a jury, we don't have somebody who would like to talk, who would like to listen to themselves. So really, um, the community is um, the, the guys who will give you feedback. And also, we are more like this. We are more like the, the Hülle der Möwen. Um, there's Peer who would take part in it before. And he said it quite right. Um, as soon as you have convinced with your idea, your parents, your sister, your friends, and also the society, then you're sure that you're on a good way. So we don't rely on judges. We rely on people who really start to, would like to use your product and your service or whatever you would like to come up with. So that's really the most important thing of this whole week. So don't trust the TV in any case. So. <laughs> So in this way, we would like to um, start loving your feedback because you will get a lot of feedback throughout the week. But um, there will be also some confusion going around because uh, this guy tells this and this girl said this to me. So in the end, you're always asked to do decisions that feel right for you. Um, yeah, you will come to this Con you would come to this um, insights throughout the week, but you can rely on your inner voice and you will find a way. I'm pretty sure of it. So that's it. Go out, play, and have fun. And regarding go out, play, and have fun, we have a very nice mentor that I was, have left out so far in the end. Um, he did a lot of crazy stuff. We know each other now for five years, and he really succeeded in different fields and with an always very playful mindset. And so uh, please welcome... Uh, Lars Müller, which we, we, we try to be a little bit more Italian throughout the week. So uh, let's say Don Birra. Yeah, let's see what he comes up with. Um, yeah, give him a warm applause for Lars Müller. The first time being called Don Bira. Uh, it's nice. Um, my official title is Chief Beer Officer. And um, the most official title is uh, I looked that up first chairman of the board of the digital economy in Schleswig Holstein. Um, um, we, we're about 200 companies and organizations that come together to, to uh, succeed in making Schleswig-Holstein more digital and to be successful, to cooperate, and to bring, um, to bring, it, to bring it up, the digital economy. And um, I'm doing that for about two years. And um, I met uh, Alex, and he said, let's, let's do stuff together. Um, Let's, let's support the, the prototyping week. Uh, and I said, yeah, that's a nice idea. And Divish is a supporter of the prototyping week. And then he said, um, I should tell you something for the start, for the beginning. And I asked, um, like, what? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, can, I can tell you my titles or something. Um, he said, no, just, just tell your story. And I thought that would be quite boring, um, but I said, okay. I do that very often in German. It's the first time for me to tell my story in English. So that's a quite, quite the pr prototype uh, today. Um, okay, so um, what, what am I doing in my normal job? I'm a, I'm a CEO of a, of a digital agency. And the truth is, I founded that 20 years ago, over 20 years ago. Um, I, was, I was sitting in the room of my, my best mate at school, and we were like thinking about how to earn money and how to impress girls. Um, but not doing a normal job, not working at a bar or something. Now I know working at the bar is quite good and it's quite helpful for my, would, would be, uh, it would have been quite helpful for my later life, but I didn't know that. I, I decided with him to found a web agency to make homepages because we thought someday every company would need a website. 
And 20 years ago, in the small town of Glücksburg, that's near to Flensburg, we were the only ones who thought that. <laughs> we tried to sell some websites, but we did not succeed in that way we hoped to. Um, but we continued. We built a website for uh, 100 Mark um, for his dad. <laughs> he had a shop. He had a shop in Flensburg, and, and we built a website. It took hours and hours and hours, but um, someday it was uh, finished. And um, from that point on, um, people were interested in websites. Um, it took some years, but yeah, it, it, it came to, to northern Germany that there is this internet and you should have a website. Um, yeah, and that's boring because I, I, I still do that. I build websites for companies. Uh, we do a lot of consulting and um, online marketing and design and software development. We have uh, about 20, 26, 27 employees working at, at the company Widgetal. We call it Widgetal now. Um, so, and, and some years ago I thought, this is quite boring. I, I have to do something else. Um, maybe I should, should start with a blog. Uh, bloggers are quite cool, um, so uh, they, they always get stuff um, from the companies that, that want to be mentioned on the blog. And I thought, what's, what, what would be cool to have, uh, like, um, uh, like beer? Um, so, so drinking beer was a hobby of mine, and, and I thought having a beer blog... Um, beer... Every day. Um, and so I did it. I grabbed a, uh, a friend of mine and, and we said, okay, let's start the wheat beer blog, weizenblog.de, and write some, some articles about beer. Uh, and th this is, I think it's eight, eight, seven or eight years ago, um, no one knew about craft beer. No one in Germany. And me neither. Um, and then I started blogging, and nothing happened. I didn't get beer, <laughs> didn't get visitors. <laughs> I'm, I'm an online marketing expert, but I didn't get visitors to my blog. Um, so I, I thought about stopping or quitting or, or, or deleting the blog, but I, I, I continued. And, and then it, it happened to Germany um, that some guys from from America, from England, from Denmark, from everywhere, came to Germany and said, uh, craft beer is quite cool. And the Germans said, no, we have the Reinheitsgebot, we have the purity law, craft beer is not okay. And it took some years, um, and I think it was 2013, 2014, when it really started, and, and, and some breweries started making craft beer. And they looked on the web, and they found my blog. And there it was. <laughs> Some packages arrived with craft beer and I started drinking, drinking again. Um, and I started blogging again and um, I visited some craft beer days and, and all that stuff. And um, yeah, and I thought about founding something that was different from doing websites or or, or doing online marketing, and um, so I thought selling beer would be nice because if you buy beer for a cheap price and you sell it for a higher price, you earn money and you can buy more beer. And um, but I wasn't quite experienced in having a, a local store or something, so I started it online. Um, and then I realized sending packages with beer is quite quite hard because beer is in bottles and they break. They are quite heavy, um, and after six or seven months, I decided to have a real shop. And I never had a real shop. I, I, I don't even have a, um, um, an edu education in anything. I have my, my A-labels at, at school, um, but um, I quit my, my studies. Um, I, I, I don't know how to have a shop. Um, and everyone said, that's a crazy idea to have a, a shop when you don't know how to have uh, to do the business. 
And I said, no, I, I take one year and if I burn some money, that's, that's a pity, but it's okay. And um, if it works, um, that's really cool. You have your own beer shop. Um, and so I found a, a location next to, my, to, my, um, to where I live and I opened a beer shop. And I started buying beer, selling beer. I was in the shop on Fridays and Saturdays um, and people came in and bought beer. And then I started doing um, beer tastings and I built an online shop and uh, now I have two employees uh, working on the shop. Um, someone who's making uh, the, 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 tasting, um, the, the tasting sets and, and education in, in, in beer. And um, yeah, it worked out. And I, I didn't know before. I just tried. Um, and I had a lot of fun. So my message maybe is just do it. Just, just make your, your own thing. Build a and um, maybe it happens that it's successful, maybe not. Um, I always thought if it's not successful, I have a lot of beer. <laughs> That's okay too. So um, then two years ago, somebody asked me um, if I wanted to be the first chairman of the board of the digital economy Schleswig-Holstein. I said, oh, I don't know. Is it okay because I sell beer? Um, yes, I have a digital agency and all that stuff, and I, I know about the digital economy. Uh, economy, but is is that okay? The, these two parts do they do they do they match? Do they go together? Uh, and and he said, Yeah, everyone likes beer. Um, and so I started, and now I'm the chairman of this board. And uh, on uh, many events of the digital economy, we drink beer together. So, we will do on Friday, when your final presentations are. Um, I'm very excited to look at these presentations and to, to find out what your uh, prototypes, what your prototypes um, from this week will be. And um, after that, we have a, a small keynote from, from a guy from N26, that's a fintech from, from Berlin. Um, a very successful fintech. And uh, he will tell about his way of, of, of getting rich um, or getting, getting a prototype to work. <laughs> um, it's the same thing. And after that, we'll drink some beer together, I hope. Uh, and I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to this event on Friday. Uh, it's, it's the inofficial uh, finish of the, of the digital week. So, see you soon. Thank you. Great.